Today I'll be creating this shirt design on Photoshop using only AI generated images. The AI platform that I use is called Playground AI and unlike Midjourney, they do offer a free basic plan at least for now. So without further ado guys, let's get started. Yo, what is good? It's Dixon, your boy from Intuitive Designs. Now, I understand that using AI is kind of controversial because some people feel really threatened by it for obvious reasons. But personally, I treat it like a tool and it still requires a human touch to do what I do as a graphic designer. And it's not going away anytime soon, guys. It is what it is. So instead of whining about it, why not utilize it to your benefit and actually make money at the end of the project? process right first go to your browser and then type in playgroundai.com now if this is your first time sign up for an account before you begin once you've done that this is how the home page should look like after that just click on the create button on the top right corner here to create a new canvas and this is how it looks like under the number of images select four but let's go through all of these settings one by one First, make sure that you are in the canvas section and not the board. And then to the right panel, we're gonna set the dimensions to 672 by 1024, roughly about the same aspect ratio as a t-shirt design. Now we're gonna set seven for the prompt guidance and then 50 for the quality and details. Back to the left panel, under the filter section, we're not gonna use any filters because personally, I don't think they work that well. Maybe it's just because the prompts that I use, but there's tons of options that you can play with, but we'll leave it for now. And for the negative prompts, we're gonna put in stuff like deformed or deformed fingers. Just copy everything I put in here. Basically, the AI will try to not get the stuff that we put in here. Now, last step is the sampler. We're gonna start off with LMS, but you can always experiment yourself. I would say DDIM and PNDM generate results the fastest but my personal favorites are dpm2 dpm2a and lms and anything in between them are a bit of a hit and miss sometimes but uh, for the sake of this tutorial let's just start with lms now here comes the crucial part which is the prompts um the basically commands or words that you type in and they will turn into images so to generate one of those vintage graphic illustrations i found this prompt works the best so let's say i want to generate a hellhound so we're going to start off with hellhound snarling in a 1982 dark fantasy film oil painting that's the prompt guys just replace hellhound snarling to anything you can imagine like tiger roaring or bear scratching whatever and then just hit generate this is a great part about playground ai guys even if you copy the prompts one to one exactly the same it will still not generate the same results so you always end up with original images and if you're wondering what other prompts are out there you can download my prompts pack here on my store i've compiled tons of them and believe me when i say that they are sick link in the description below all right back at it guys here are the results i'm not feeling the first two i would say this one is the best one out of these four but let's try again this time i'm gonna add pitbull and the prompt i don't know about you guys but i am not feeling any of these at all let's try again and get rid of the pitbull and then change the sampler to ddim now these are more like it. I would say the third one is my pick out of all of these so far, but let's try one more time and add Macabre to the prompt this time. Honestly guys, I'm pretty much sold with this one right here. I'm ready to just move on to Photoshop, but you know, let's try one more time. They're pretty good, but let's just proceed with this one. Like I said, so right click on the image of your choice and then select upscale times four. Give it a few seconds there and then just download. Now we're ready to move on to Photoshop. Okay, so the file size is A2, same as usual. That's 4961 by 7016 pixels at 300 DPI. 
Now just open up the hound image and then drag it into the working file. Make sure it is centered and then command J to duplicate it and then command G to group it. This will serve as a backup in case we mess up the image down the line and then just drag it below the background layer like this. Now, first thing we want to do is rename the layer and then convert it to smart object before we size it up to fill in the design file. After that, we're going to rasterize it back because we will be using the select subject tool to trace the hound outline before we extract it from the background. Now under the drop down select cloud, it tends to work better than the vice. That's just from my own experience. So just do that. And then there we have it. But of course, it's not perfect. We're still going to use the lasso tool to kind of manually refine some of the edges. This part is pretty boring, guys, so I'll just put it up for you guys. Right now, once you're satisfied with the selection, go to select and mask here. And as for the settings, just copy everything I do here and then just hit OK. We're not there yet. I feel like the legs end a bit too sudden. So I'll use a soft round brush tool to brush back in the background to kind of make it look more natural. But of course, this step the first, depending on your AI generated image. Now, if you're wondering, wouldn't this not work for DTG printing because of the transparency? Don't worry guys, I'll show you how to prep it later in the video. Now this looks good enough. Let's just select both of these layers and then option command E to merge it as another layer, convert it to smart object and then go to filter gallery and then apply these two layers. Now the first one is the grain and then the second one is dry brush. I almost always use this tool. Just copy the settings that I put in here and then hit OK. Now this will refine the look of the image because if you zoom it close enough, it's got that AI generated look, which is something that you don't want. Right guys, so now I'm going to use the selective color tool to alter the red color in the image. Um, this, of course, once again, depends on your image, but the goal here is to make it look vintage. So I'll tone down the red just a little bit and then introduce some yellow tinge to it to make it more vintage. Once that's done, let's move on with the text. Okay, so for the font I'm using today is called Coro Gorge. Sorry for butchering the name. Download links below, guys. It's free if you want to get this font. But yeah, just type in your brand name. In my case, I'm putting in Eden Dead. Uh, fix the kerning just a little bit and then Command T to select the font and then go to the warp button here and select Arch, which is this one. Make sure that the bend is set in 50 and then we're going to size it up like so and then drag the top like this to kind of elongate the font. Now, guys, don't worry about doing this. It almost always looks good. Now, once you're satisfied with it, let's change the font to red. I'm just going to eyeball it, guys. I'll put the hex code on screen anyway, if you really want to copy everything. Now, the next step is, of course, the subtext. I'm just going to put in um, Enduring Spirit, pretty standard stuff. Now, that script font doesn't look good. So I'm just going to go with Helvetica and then add this icon from my Y2K pack. Link below if you want to get it from my store. So I'm going to add this texture from Spoon Graphics to really sell that vintage worn look. So I'll just drag it into the working file, rotate 90 degree, size it up and then set the blending mode to multiply. Now the final step is making it ready for printing. It's very easy guys. Just select all the layers and then option command E to merge it into a single layer. Convert that layer to smart object and then go to select color range and then select shadows under the drop down menu. Drop the fuzziness all the way down to zero and then set the range to 30. Take invert and then hit OK. This will then select all the black color in our design. And then by adding a mask layer, it will mask it and then leave us with something like this. Now your design is ready for printing. Just save it as PNG. That is all for today, guys. I know the design is pretty straightforward, but the point is that we can use AI to generate assets for our design. So why not benefit from it, right? 
subscribe if you're new so you don't miss out on my weekly videos follow me on all my socials see you on the next one